May the 31st saw the rollout of the first of 16 Augusta Westland AW101 Royal Norwegian Air Force all-weather search and rescue helicopters at the Leonardo Helicopters Yeovil facility in the UK. In December 2013, the Norwegian Ministry of Justice and Public Security signed a contract for 16 AW101 helicopters plus support and training to be operated by 330 Squadron Royal Norwegian Air Force at six bases throughout Norway. The AW101 is replacing their existing fleet of Augusta Wesson Sea King Mark 43 helicopters, which were first delivered in 1972. The Norwegian SAR aircraft is the latest version of the AW101 and is the first aircraft to be equipped with the new four-axis digital automatic flight control system. The aircraft is also the first to be equipped with the Leonardo Fin Mechanica Osprey 30 Acer radar based around a flat panel antenna design. It is also equipped with the FLIR system Star Sapphire 380 high definition electro optical system, Smith Myers Red Streak mobile telephone location system, laser optical avoidance system, and the obstacle proximity LIDAR system which provides warnings of wires and other obstacles, plus a full icing protection system. The fully integrated avionics emission systems provide an all-weather day and night SAR capability, and with the delivery of the first aircraft in March 2017, the Leonardo Helicopters test team are busy developing the operational capabilities of this new generation AW101. Andy Strachan, Chief Test Pilot, explains. The Norwegian 101 is, is the next... Um development, if you like, of the 101 family. Mechanically, it's essentially the same as, as the uh, 101 Internationals, but it uh, has a unique set of uh, systems in it. The specification of it is, is really quite uh, extensive. And it's those systems and an integration, more importantly, of those systems that are really going to make the difference for the aircraft. And what are those systems? Uh, wide and varied. Uh, the main ones being the, the radar is a completely new radar. In fact, I believe we're the first helicopter to have it fitted. And that's the Osprey? That's the Osprey, yes, it is. The uh, Telex Osprey. Uh, very capable, electronically scanned. Uh, radar, no moving parts as such, it's not the old-fashioned scanner and of course it brings with it all the electronic advantages that that, that sort of system has. So it's a full 360 degree radar, multi-mode, uh, think of a radar mode, it's got it uh, and, and it, it will certainly enhance the, the capabilities of doing the machine. And this aircraft's got a digital flight control system or a new digital flight control system? It, it has, and that's actually been, uh, is, is it at the moment our major project on the aircraft, as well as, as developing the integration of the systems. Uh, the digital FCS, uh, it, it's, it, oh, clearly the 101's always had a, a pretty good auto, autopilot system, uh, but this one brings it up into the modern age. And we've got two real plans with that. One is to ensure that the aircraft still flies like a 101, like a, a traditional 101, but also with the new digital access it brings extra capabilities, uh, extra functionality that we're working on and put all that combined specifically towards the mission that the aircraft's going to be flying. And that's combining that digital flight control system with the Osprey radar and the EO system? Yeah, yeah, they all tie in together. It's it's one of the things we've been doing for 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 many years now, particularly with the 101. But it's it's also gone across into the the 159, the Wildcat, and the various other uh, things that the company make uh, in terms of the civil side, the 189, 139. And it's all about the integration of these very clever systems and making them all work together to the best advantage. And the biggest advantage, of course, is obviously the reduction in in workload on the crew. So this aircraft at the moment, it's developing the mission system or the integration yeah, of the yeah. mission system? Yeah, yeah. So we've, there's a fair amount of development yet to do. And that is all part of the programme and that's all being programmed in. Um, and, and we're moving through that fairly well. Uh, main thing we're concentrating on the moment, there's two parallel lines really. One is the continued development of the digital autopilot system. And the second part is this integration of all the different systems, most of which are, are new to the aircraft. And uh, just to refer, that it was the Acer Osprey radar for the EO system and the mobile phone system into the aircraft and the digital flight control system. Yeah, the, the, there's, there's, uh, there's integration in, in appropriate parts of all that. They're, they are, in effect, 
standalone systems, but where it's appropriate to combine them. For instance, um, the radar and the EO, if let's say we were out searching for something, we found a radar target, the way the system's integrated, that radar target effectively immediately becomes a waypoint that we can steer the aircraft to automatically. And if we want to, conduct an automatic approach to that point. Similarly with the EO system, if we find something that we're looking for on the EO, we can do exactly the same. We can point the radar and the EO at the same place. And even when it comes to night flying, with when we have a, uh, a large searchlight on the side of the aircraft, we can point the searchlight at the same place either the EO is looking uh, and vice versa. So it's where it's appropriate to mix the systems and then try and make that as easy for the crew to manage as possible is, is the aim of the games. Th this is the latest version and, and each variant progresses uh, and continues to progress. Uh, this will very definitely be leading edge um, when, when we finish, finish the development of it. Uh, it will be an awesome aircraft, I've got to say. Brilliant, yeah. thank you very much for your time.